Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar today. Uh, my name is Mush Handa. I'm one of the co-hosts and co-presenters of the webinar today. And I have with me over here as well, uh, Mr. Mukesh Utwani. Uh, so our topic of discussion today is uh, related to the CICD pipeline and how your teams can benefit uh, uh, in applying that uh, methodology uh, using tools such as Catalan. So our agenda today is to first off understand what the CICD process is and why uh, it is important to be set up and what are the benefits you get out of it. And then we also plan to do a hands-on demo using Catalog with the Jenkins plugin and also a quick de a demo uh, of uh, Circle CI. So I'd like to start off our conversation with one key quote that I like to use over and over. Uh, uh, I'm personally a, 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 a fan of motor racing, and as I'm sure most of you are, a lot of you are. Uh, but one of the things that stuck with me that Mario Andretti said, uh, who's a former uh, NASCAR race car driver, for those of you who don't know, uh, he had a very interesting quote a few uh, years ago where he said, if things seem under control, you're just not going fast enough. Right. Um, I, I immediately identified and associated with that just as a tester, right? Um, where, you know, in, in any of the engagements, any of the projects that I uh, used to work in and I'm continuing to work in, I've always had that challenge uh, given to me either by my development lead or the project manager or the scrum master to say, hey, how can you actually, you know, speed up the testing process? Right. And, and I think with the with the availability of uh, uh, CICD tools for us, uh, I think this is something that uh, is becoming a reality now where as things seem uh, to pick up pace and uh, we are able to test more uh, uh, efficiently in terms of speed. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's always pushing the envelope to the next level, right, to say, hey, how can we even get faster than what we are doing now. And, and you know, that's a great, I think, uh, topic uh, to continue talking about what besides CICD uh, can we as testers do to actually increase the speed. So maybe a topic for another day. Um, coming back to CICD, right? One of the key things that we have to always, always think about is why, why do we need test automation in, in, in our solution, right? Why do we need to apply and leverage CICD tools? So if you take a step back and you think about really what is happening within the industry right now, right? Um, I think one of the key observations you, you will make is, is that the global competition with, with software providers, right? The global competition has basically allowed uh, the, the end users of those systems, those applications to have a very low tolerance level for defects, right? Uh, you know, I can use an example of, of mobile apps, right? Uh, studies have shown where as people download mobile apps, if they don't like what they see within the first 45 to 50 seconds, uh, they close the app, they uninstall the app and they're not coming back, right? So, you know, that, that is one example of, of low tolerance that has occurred uh, simply due to just the availability of so many alternatives out there today, right? And, and, and that's fueled really by, by the global sense of competition to get to market and get to a, an app out in, in, in the open uh, 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 as early as possible, as possible, right? And, and that leads into the second aspect. Along with low tolerance for defects, the other pressure that I think delivery teams uh, and agile teams feel is how soon can we get a new iteration, a new idea, a new feature, a better feature out in the hands of the users as soon as possible. So that has definitely resulted in, you know, putting extra pressure 
uh, for the agile teams to deliver in in shorter and and faster iterations uh, as part of their product life cycle. Uh, from that perspective, you know, uh, as engineers, uh, when we find and try to find solutions, the, the industry buzzword, if you will, uh, has been DevOps, right? Uh, I, I definitely agree with uh, uh, DevOps being as, a, as an, an integral part of this solution, right? But for, for teams that are not mature yet and, and have not gotten a lot of the DevOps tool chains in, in place, um, I would recommend starting uh, with, with step one, which is CICD, right? Continuous integration, continuous delivery. So really from a, from a tester's perspective, what does that really, really mean, right? What this basically means is we have to test earlier and test more often. Uh, obviously, that can be accomplished very efficiently, very effectively with applying automation tools such as Catalog. Uh, the second aspect, though, is a little bit more tricky. But, but what that is, is basically how do we test earlier and test often, but how do we also continue to test real-world workflows, right? And, and what I mean by that is really the scenarios or the 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 processes and workflows that are going to be really used by the end user or audience of the system under test, right? And in order for you to do that, it cannot completely be dependent just on your automation scripts or your automation tests. There has to be an aspect of manual exploratory testing that has to occur. However, if you, if you do not leverage automation tests and, and leverage it in, in your CI CD pipeline, you're in essence as a tester not going to have a lot of time to actually go and do exploratory testing uh, to add more value to the uh, uh, product being delivered out there. So one key thing that I do see continuing to be missed as people adopt CI, CD and, and, and do real world workflows uh, and testing in that regard is testing with a comprehensive mindset. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, not just focusing on functional tests and whether a particular screen looks good, whether, whether an API service uh, provides the, the appropriate information, but also look at things around performance, around usability, around uh, accessibility. Things of that uh, nature are also what makes the overall user experience and, and their adoption level of your product, of your software uh, that much higher. So it's very important that as, as testers, when we begin testing uh, applications, we're not just limiting it to just the functional aspect. Functionality is definitely a core key component, but from, a, from an adoption perspective for the, the, the intended audience or target users of the system, we have to look at it from other uh, angles as well. All right, so let's look at a traditional or a typical CI CD pipeline, right? What I have on the screen here is an example of what where you may be able to apply different tools as part of your CI CD pipeline when it comes to testing. So as, as uh, I'm sure a lot of you may be familiar already, if you think about you know, uh, a CI CD pipeline, there's two components to it, right? The integration piece, which is essentially as the code is being developed uh, by, by the different uh, tester, uh, by the different uh, developers in the team, uh, they will begin, you know, checking in their code uh, in your code repository, such as GitHub or what have you, right? And and as all of the that code is committed and merged back, uh, the overall build process is kicked off as part of uh, the CI pipeline. Uh, you know, tools such as Circle CI, such as Jenkins, uh, definitely that build out the packages and then help. Uh, 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 validate the, 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 the integrity of the code uh, is where as testers, we can definitely use tools such as Catalon to jump in and supplement the testing that is going on right after the unit test. 
right? So um, I, in our experience, have uh, used uh, Catalon as part of the integration test, as well as also performing a series of high priority tests uh, uh, functionality validations and things of that nature also within the CI pipeline because the one key important aspect uh, that that you get with with applying automation into your CI CD pipeline is to be able to test sooner and and hence give faster feedback earlier feedback to the developers if you encounter issues right so using that as a as a business priority uh, to to integrate tests sooner is is a key uh, advantage that you can now uh, uh, benefit and apply using Catalog. The second half of this is the continuous delivery pipeline, right? So that's essentially where once the code that is packaged and, and built and is ready to be deployed into different environments, uh, you actually could use, you know, uh, tools such as Docker and, and Kubernetes and, and Puppet to orchestrate and have all of that created for you. Right. And uh, the, the CD pipeline is in essence another area where you can then reapply a different suite of tests from Catalon uh, and, and, and make sure that your validations and things of that nature are effectively done as well. Uh, the good part uh, of this sort of layout is, uh, you know, even though you have dedicated environments that you call out as, you know, QA or staging or production, in essence, by by using an approach uh, such as uh, applying Catalon into like containers and such, uh, you are stepping away from having a, a finite uh, set of these environments. You can actually have a, a categories of, of environments where you can group them as pre-prod or prod and the number of environments under each of these two categories is, is totally related by uh, uh, you know how many uh, uh, parallel environments you can actually support within your infrastructure. So here is uh, an example of how I would recommend setting up uh, uh, an automation uh, uh, in your CI CD pipeline. Right. Uh, one of the key important things uh, for you to think about is how do you logically organize and group your test cases and test suites? Right. Do you tag them? Do you associate them with a certain code branch or tag them uh, in certain functional modules of your code? Uh, just so that way you can logically organize and be able to pull up a specific suite of tests depending on the, the area of uh, uh, the system or the code that is being modified, right? Uh, so, so having a logical group is, is, is important. Uh, the second aspect of that, because of the way you actually can now logically group these test suites, uh, you can apply rules uh, within your your build servers and and also in your repositories to be able to dynamically uh, select and choose what test suites uh, are required to be uh, executed. Uh, Catalon also has a capability uh, of tagging and then also uh, creating dynamic test suites based on certain triggers. So you can definitely leverage that aspect as well. Um, and then once all of that is identified, you can configure that with the CI CD server to be able to automatically, you know, uh, execute a, a bigger suite or a smaller suite or a specific suite based on the type of code changes and commits that have been done. And what that actually allows you to do is mitigate a bit of risk to say, you know, what is the impact of the direct changes to the code that have occurred so far and then you also get the flexibility of creating a parallel effort of a, a bigger regression suite if that's what is needed right and and once you have all of that configured you can trigger and run the test based on those conditions and and the great part of this is because it's part of like an auto kickoff and auto selections uh, the key analysis aspect comes in where you may at this point need some manual oversight to go in and analyze it. Uh, the great part about where our industry is headed is that could technically also potentially in the very near term be supported by uh, uh, you know, AI and ML uh, algorithms as well. Uh, so looking at what 
the the three main benefits of uh, having your automation tests uh, as part of your ci cd pipelines right the first one as i was mentioning earlier is all about getting the feedback of your success or failures or risks sooner or faster back to the development team right uh, applying automation uh, in in this fashion also you know lets you uh, broaden your test coverage by by tackling different types of tests so you could do ui tests you could do you know ui tests using headless browsers you could do tests in the api levels you could do validations of data and, and transaction information and so forth um, and ultimately what that does is it, over, it raises the overall confidence in the delivered software from your team, right? And, and as I was mentioning earlier, that is the key, key essence, right? Uh, if, it, if you think, really think about it, uh, the role of testers is, is what is supplemented by this, right? Which is our role is to really increase the confidence uh, that is uh, uh, in the software that has been delivered by the team. Um, I also think the, the key benefit of, of getting automation here is uh, really opening up capacity and bandwidth for testers to really go do the manual, you know, exploratory testing as well. Getting a look at understanding the domain and really applying that knowledge and that experience to really find issues that perhaps, you know, the, the, the core automation may not always find. So key takeaways from, from this particular introduction, I would say is, uh, you know, obviously just manual testing is not enough to, to be able to respond to the demand and challenge of uh, executing tests faster, right? Uh, the other aspect I would also, uh, you know, share with everyone is uh, just automation through the UI is not sufficient. You definitely have to, uh, look at different ways of how testing and validation can occur and not just limited to the UI aspect only. Uh, and ultimately, you know, testing in, in CI CD allows for both of these things to happen, right? And ultimately the goal being freeing up your bandwidth of your tester for them to go ahead and do more exploration and, and find uh, interesting issues uh, that, you know, can only be done uh, by, by really engaging with the application under test and applying the domain knowledge uh, that you build up. Cool, so time for the, the fun stuff now. I'm gonna hand it over to Mikesh who will uh, walk us through some of the items uh, uh, with a demo on how Catalon Studio can be uh, implemented uh, with CICD. Mukesh, are you on? Yeah, hi everyone. Is it audible? Hi, yes, we can hear you, okay. Yeah, thanks much for such a wonderful uh, demo part. Like uh, you really explained what the main importance of CICD in automation. So guys, I will uh, continue with uh, how we can implement the actual CICD from like uh, using Catalon. So are you able to see my screen so that I can continue? Mukesh, we're still seeing the slide deck. Is that what you intended to show, or do you want to show your share your screen on your on your machine? Yeah, so I actually have to share my screen. Okay, let's go through the PPT first, then I will share my screen. For okay. The demo. Okay. Okay. So in order to start with CI CD, so we have a tool called Jenkins, which is a CI tool. So Catalon has released a plugin, okay, through which you can easily run your Catalon test via Jenkins. So this plugin is very useful when you have to integrate your test with a CI CD pipeline. So what exactly this plugin will do? Um, can somebody help me to move the slides? Yeah, so um, we'll talk about this plugin. Um, so we have uh, two demos for today. One is how this Catalon uh, Jenkins plugin works and another demo, how Circle CI tool will fit uh, for your CI CD. So you can use any other CI CD tool as well, but we will continue with Circle CI. Okay, so as, I, uh, as Mush discussed, like Catalon Studio is now capable enough to run different type of tests. So if you see right now, um, Catalon Studio supports mobile automation, API automation, web automation, right? So in this demo, we are running a 
web test okay so we have a test which is uh, simply testing few functionality of our application and uh, that test we will see how it will fit into our ci cd pipeline so we are using today jenkins okay docker for deployment and we are also using today catalon analytics to show you how it will update your analytics based on your test um, behavior whether it's pass or fail okay but catalon is smart enough to integrate with all the tools like jira slay qtest and many more okay so uh yeah so what exactly we are going to do uh like how exactly catalon will fit into your ci cd so as you can see we have a build okay so once your application is built okay so let's say we are building or deploying our application on the staging environment then your test will run so this test is nothing but the actual catalon test and once this test is passed then it will deploy to the production environment so now uh, can somebody give me a control so that i can see my uh, share my screen so mukesh you can take control you can start sharing your screen whenever you're ready yes just a second okay guys so this is the jenkins uh, which we are using for our demo so this is a job which we have created let me uh, go through it first so we have a jenkins job which we have created what exactly this uh, job does uh, so i'm assuming guys like you guys are familiar with jenkins uh, which is actually a ci tool okay so what we have we have a repository just let me show you so this is our application which we are running so i can also show you how exactly this application look like once you deploy it and uh, run it on a web uh, guys um, i'm getting a lot of chats that are saying that uh, you cannot see the screen that mukesh is sharing but um, i think uh, i am on a different location as well so i can see mukesh's screen it may be hidden behind your web browser can can you guys please check and see if uh, you are now able to see the screen i have a, a, what we are seeing right now is a tab on a web browser that shows kira healthcare service on mukesh's screen that's what i'm seeing at least from a different location so i i see a mixed uh, uh, count of people who are able to see some and and are not mukesh can you un uh, stop sharing and share it one more time so that way we we can just make sure everybody gets it yeah uh, is it visible to everyone uh what do you have right now on your screen yeah it is like a uh, aut application which you are going to test healthcare service and yep. is the jank yes so i can see your screen now in the the pop up for uh, the share screen okay go ahead sorry continue please thanks mosh so guys what we have say so this is our github repository where actual our application is uh, like you can see the application code and our test also is present so this is the actual repository so here we have the application and the test also so what exactly we are going to do so if you see here right now we have configured this job in a such a way that if there is any change in the github okay or any commit or changes done by the developer automatically it should start your test okay so you can see in the build section we have given a checkbox that it should poll scm like if there is any change it should immediately start your test so what exactly this jenkins job will do first it will deploy your application 
And once your application is deployed, then second step, it will run your Catalon Studio test. Okay, so we have a set of tests which is already predefined. So this is the command which we are giving, which will simply run your test. So if application deployed, it will run the test. And how we are getting this option, it is coming from Catalon plugin, which I discussed just now. You just need to go to manage plugin, search for that plugin, and you will be able to see this section. So what you can see here right now, it automatically takes this uh, version which you mentioned, okay? And if you have any pre-installed version, you can mention here and it will take the pre-installed version as well. And right now it is running on a Docker container, okay? So it is running on a Linux system. So these are the commands which is uh, coming and I will show you how, to get, how you can get these arguments. And these are some additional parameters which we are passing since we are running on Linux system. So we are setting up the resolution as well. Now, if you have been using the Catalon, then let's say you have a test which is already configured and you have a test suite as well. Now, let's say you want to run the same test suite. You can see this option right on top. Yep. When you click on this option, it generates a command. So you can see here, this is the actual command, which is giving you the complete detail about your test suite, which you want to run. So if you see closely, it says, uh, what is the run mode, test suite name, execution profile, browser type, everything. So same command we have mentioned here, it is only thing like we have mentioned that we want to run the test in headless mode. Okay, so this is what this, job will do and uh, if your job pass or fail immediately it will reflect to the Catalon analytics and uh, you can also see uh, email as well. Okay, so that we will see. So let me do one thing. Let me make some changes in the GitHub repository and this job should start. So let me make some changes. Okay, so this is the page or I will say the actual uh, code which where I have to make the changes. So we are going to change one small uh, file. Uh, we are going to add it this. While if you are working with uh, any other editor, you can directly uh, push the ch uh, changes from your editor or from the CMD. For this demo, I'm directly making the changes from the GitHub. So let's say I made one changes called login to make appointment test. So it should immediately start your test. Let's just save this file. Yes. And it will wait for a few seconds and then it will start building this job. So you can see it is running. So what exactly the job will do as we have configured in this job first, it will deploy the application. Okay. And then it will run our Catalon test. Okay. So you can see our test also started since it is running on headless mode. Okay. You will not be able to see the UI and it is running on a separate Docker container. And if you just see closely enough, first part, it's all about the deploying the application. And once your application is started, then it will continue with your test part. And finally, if you see our test passed, and this is just now a few seconds ago, your test also executed. Okay. And our test was expecting the same. Okay. So it was running as expected and it is passing. Now let's do one thing. Let's make the changes, which is not expected. And ideally this time it should fail. So if you see here, uh, just a uh, minute, we will make another change. Okay. So this is another file. If you see this application, once it's all about appointment application, when you book an appointment, you should get a confirmation that appointment uh, is confirmed. 
So you can see there's one small text. So we are expecting a text should be appointment confirmation, but let me change it to some other text. And this time our test should fail because in our test, we are giving one assertion that it should uh, verify this text. So let me make these changes. It will take few seconds and it will start building again. Okay, in the meanwhile, I can show you uh, the email. Okay, so this was the test which we executed and it is working fine. The next test should start now, which should fail. Okay, let's wait. And just a small thing which you want to see. It started by SCM, okay? So as soon as we made the changes, it is pulled by uh, Jenkins and it is running. Yeah, it's starting now. And if you see the logs, application deployed, it is just checking the plugins folder. So actually this test suite have uh, two scenarios. So yes, our test failed. Okay, so you can see it is saying that we are unable to verify the text, which is appointment confirmation because we did the changes. Now that uh, keyword is missing. Okay, it's not complete keyword, but yeah, that confirmation is not uh, proper now. So it, our test is failing and it should fail. And immediately we'll get the result one pass one fail and if you see the zip file which we got yeah just unzip this and see so you can see one test passed which is just a login test and another test failed because of this keyword okay appointment confirmation and now if you make the changes again, it will start and this time our job will pass. So this is how you can simply configure your job. Like if there are any changes, it should start your test immediately. So let me close this part now. And immediately your cat, uh, analytics also should get updated. Yeah, so this is failed. Now again, we made the changes. Now it will run and this time it will pass. Yeah. So the second part is now with okay, Circle CI. How you can deploy the application on staging, run your test and based on your test, status whether it's passed or failed it should deploy to the production or not okay so um, can somebody start the ppt again okay give me one second i will switch over to that yeah if you uh, stop sharing your screen okay i can share my screen Okay, are you seeing my screen? Yes. Is this the slide you wanted to talk about? Yeah. So, okay. so this is the first demo which we already discussed just now. What exactly is happening whenever a developer is making any changes? It is uh, 
starting your Jenkins job and that Jenkins job is simply running your Catalan test, right? Now let's switch to the another demo. Uh, so, Mush, can you switch to the next slide? Yeah. Yeah. So now second scenario is, let's say a developer is making any changes to the application. Okay. So whenever a commit happens on the repository, so we have a circle CI, which is a complete CCD tool, which will actually trigger a pipeline. Okay. So this pipeline will have the three stages. We'll talk about the stages now. First stage will be the build, which will build the application and it will deploy on a staging system. Second stage will be running a Catalan test. So this Catalan test will run your test. If your test pass, then finally it will deploy the same application to the production. Okay. That is a happy scenario when your everything is working, your test is running and it will deploy to the production. Second use case, which we will see that now developer is making some changes and now these changes are causing some issue to the application. Okay. Let's say some um, wrong commit happened or some additional code, which is not tested. Then again, circle CI will start the pipeline. Again, it will build the application. Now the Catalan test will start. Okay. And if our test is failing, it will not deploy to the production environment. That's what we are going to do now. So uh, let me share my screen. So we are seeing your screen, Mukesh, right now. what exactly this circle CI. So let me just log into circle CI. Okay. Just let me log in. Just a second, guys. Yeah. So this is the circle CI. Which, so here we have a pipeline which we have configured. So we are going to see the actual configuration, what exactly we are trying to do here. Now, same thing you can do with any other uh, CI CD tool. You can also do the same thing with uh, Jenkins as well. But if you see the look and feel of circle CI is like little interactive, you will see the real time execution. So this is actually YAML file of a circle CI, which actually have the three stages. Okay. So if you see the first stage, what it does, it simply does the build part. Okay. It will build the application. So here actually we're using a Docker image. So Docker image will provide all the required um, infrastructure for that particular application. And finally, this command will deploy application. Okay, so we have a Heroku uh, platform. So this command will actually run or push our application and it will deploy. So the first stage is all about building. It will build the application. Now, if you see the second stage, it is actually a test stage where we are again using one Docker image, which will simply install Catalan Studio on a runtime container. Okay. And finally it will simply run the command. So this is the same command, which we have given on the Jenkins, right? Which we got from uh, Catalan studio as well. So this is the same command, which we are giving here. So what exactly it will do, it will simply run your test. And these are some additional parameters, like uh, it will store the result and artifact in a specific repository or the particular path. And the last stage is the deploy part. Again, we are using the same Docker image for deployment of the production and it will do the deployment. So the minor changes, if you see here, we are deploying on a staging environment and here we are deploying on a production environment. 
So this is what exactly our three stages, but this is the actual workflow. So workflow is like you want to define how your build should or the CI CD pipeline should run. What will be the uh, sequence? So first it should build the application, then it should go to test and then deploy. Now there we are giving one condition. The test required build. If build is failing, it will not move to the uh, test stage. In the same way, deploy also need test. Like if our test is failing, it should not even move to deploy. So this is the dependency which we have given in the circle CI. Okay, so this is actually you need to understand the syntax. That's all. Same thing you can do with others as well. Now just let me quickly show you what changes we can do so that should start. And let me also show you two applications. So this is the actual staging application. Actually, it's the same application. Uh, we will make certain changes and it should reflect with the production. So we have created a two instance. One is staging and the second one is the production one. Now let's make any changes. And guys, there's small, uh, I will tell you some configuration which is missing. So let me first run this and let's see. There's some authentication issue with GitHub. So maybe I have to log in with Bitbucket and try. So let's try it first. I'm making some changes right now. Uh, let's say, okay. Okay, so guys, there's some small minor changes that I have to do right now. Uh, I just logged in with GitHub. Let me log in with Bitbucket and try. So uh, I can uh, tell you what exactly this build is doing so that I can log in and show you just a second. So this is actually three stages what it is doing. It will build the application, test the application, and finally it will deploy. So right now it is failing at the build step because of some uh, pull permission that we will fix it. So as you can see right now, build itself is failing. So it is not moving to test and deploy. So let me quickly fix this. So for this, I will uh, stop sharing for a minute. Okay, just allow me for a minute and I will be back. So Mush, uh, if you can answer a couple of questions in the chat section, uh, then in the meanwhile, I will check this uh, authentication issue. Okay, absolutely. So one of the questions that came up was uh, as far as the integration of Jenkins and Catalan, uh, the question is, do we need to have the Catalan IDE open in order to execute the test cases? The short answer is definitely not. Uh, you know, you can, uh, uh, Catalan has like a, a command line CLI uh, uh, aspect also just pass that as a parameter and that will allow you to uh, execute it without having that open uh, per se. Uh, the second question that has come in so far with, with a lot of uh, uh, people asking a similar question is does uh, the Jenkins job work for mobile automation? Can it be automatically executed without launching a simulator? Uh, and do I need a job for each test suite? So in, in, as far as a job for each test suite, uh, it would depend on whether you're using Jenkins. Usually Jenkins does have that option. I, I personally prefer to use a separate line uh, for that. As far as uh, automatically executing without launching a simulator, uh, I think I'm not very clear on that. You know, you have the options of actually launching, uh, uh, supporting, uh, uh, service providers such as you know, uh, Sauce Labs or, or Browser Stack. If you have that included and set up within uh, uh, Catalon, uh, then those will launch accordingly and 
because those are on the cloud, it, you know, it does not necessarily need to be launched on your physical machine. Uh, question also came up, a lot of people asking whether this would work with Azure DevOps CI/CD. Absolutely, right? It's, it's all about getting it in the C CLI aspect. So uh, it'll definitely work with any of your CI/CD tools that are used. Um, does scaffolding on pass global variables to the commands in Circle CI? The short answer is yes, you can, you can do that. There's documentation and information on the community chat forums that you can Google for real quick and search for real quick and should show you step-by-step step how to do that. Um, The other question is, does the Jenkins plugin automatically install Catalon? And, and the answer to that is it would be the other way around. Once you have Catalon installed, you would have to go to the marketplace and then download the Jenkins plugin. Um, another question was, can you use Catalon Jenkins for testing purposes only, even if the developers do not use it? Absolutely, right? So I think one of the key foundations for speed is the, the use of what can be done automatically, right? Uh, Jenkins by, by default is, uh, is a tool that most, you know, is, is supplementing the development lifecycle, right? So uh, I would be surprised if, if the test uh, developers did not want to use it. Uh, but, uh, you know, in, in a situation where they don't need to use it and if you feel you, you need to use it, you can definitely use that. Uh, is it possible to use Catalon on web services? Absolutely. APIs, RESTful, uh, uh, and, and SOAP-based ones uh, are all supported by, uh, by Catalon. Great. Uh, so I think that's majority of what uh, people are, uh, or most people uh, are wanting to understand. Um, Mukesh, are you, uh, are you able to show uh, the next slides of, uh, of the demo? Yes, just to give a second. Yeah. Okay. And, and guys, I know a lot of them uh, were also talking about uh, not seeing the video or the uh, when we were doing uh, the earlier demo. Uh, so we'll definitely be sharing the, uh, the recording for this uh, webinar. So uh, definitely be assured that you will, you will get the video uh, shortly after as well. All right, Mukesh's screen is back up, so uh, I'll let him continue with his demo. Yeah. So guys, there's some issue with the building of the application. It is nothing has to do with uh, like Catalon test. Okay, so what we are going to do right now, I will, I'm showing you uh, two builds which we executed uh, like prior to the demo. Okay, uh, so I'm going to show you these two builds which actually worked due to some recent changes in the application. Now the build is still uh, is failing. Okay, so now Catalon team is working on that. So it will be fixed in a few minutes. In the meanwhile, I can show you what exactly the process is. So this was a success build. So what exactly it does, same thing. First, it will uh, deploy application. Okay, so if you see the first part, it will uh, set up your environment. Then finally, it will check out a code on that particular environment. And finally, it will deploy. And uh, if you see the failed build, which we executed here, this one, so as soon as the build runs, okay, and if your test is failing, it will not deploy it to the production. So now if you see why the test failed, because we made, uh, made some changes, because of that changes, the test were failing, and finally it did not deploy it to the production. Okay, so we made some changes in the exp uh, like ID of that particular application. Okay, due to that, it is not able to identify, so our tests were failing, and finally it did not deploy to the production. So that was the main intention of showing this pipeline. But somehow the build is still is failing right now, so it is not even moving to test, and it is not even moving to deploy stage. So let me show you the success one as well. Not 
it just as it can. Mm, this is the latest build which fixed here, yeah, just a second. So once if all the stages are working, then only your pipeline will be success. So build, then test, and finally the deployment part. And based on your build status, okay, you will get keep on getting the mails immediately. And same, it will be reflected to your Catalan analytics as well. So guys, excuse us for this particular build issue because our application having some issues. Okay, so it is not even building. But this pipeline is completely working fine based on our workflow. If build is failing, it is not even moving to the next stages. Yeah. So much uh, like you can switch over to the PPT and if any, we have any Q&A, then we can uh, take it forward. Gotcha, give me two minutes and I'll switch over. So that concludes the overall presentation and demo. Uh, I think, uh, you know, as, as, uh, as we were talking in between, uh, I've answered several of the common questions that were raised. Uh, there seems to be time for maybe one more. Uh, there's a question that talked about, uh, you know, starting testing earlier, but in what context? Uh, for instance, you can only write automation tests after developers complete coding. Uh, and how earlier would you mean? Uh, Mukesh, I don't know if you want to answer that or you want me to answer that. I, it, either one is fine. So, most actually, I was checking some other chats. So, what was the actual question? Um, I missed it. So, the question was uh, if you are, uh, you know, we, we talk about starting to test earlier in the CI CD pipeline, right? Uh, one of the uh, audience members wants to know uh, what does that actually mean or some example around it because. Uh, their, their understanding is you can write automation tests only after the developers have completed coding. So what does early really mean? Hey guys, uh, again, when we talk about automation, automation is mainly about the regression test. So when we talk about regression tests, it is meant like when your application is fully developed and your test has been uh, like tested manually and now your application stable enough to run. Okay. And you want to automate all the previous regression scenario, then you should generally start automation. So that is one uh, always a happy scenario. Another case is like if you see the rapid development, all this uh, agile, we want to start automation parallel with the development, right? So that is also possible that in that case, you will not get always a good ROI because you don't have the UI still ready and you're still writing the test. Okay, so up to I will say 80% you can write the test scenarios, you can write your all the steps which you want to do, even the locators part you can uh, like write with the help like, parallelly with the development, but the actual test which you will do right once your application is built, then only you can see whether your test is running fine. Up to 80% you can write, but until you don't have the effective UI, you cannot even write 100% automation. So this early stage automation is possible with API that I completely agree, but not with the web UI. Okay, so for web, you have to still wait until your application is deployed. Okay, then you can say your yeah, final automation is done. But always I would recommend you use automation only for the regression. That always give the good ROI. 
Uh, yeah. The other question we have is uh, for leveraging CI CD, just, is it just for the current version or the latest version of Catalan or can it be applied with an older version of Catalan? As no, well? yeah. It can be applied for the older version as well. So, uh, when you download that plugin, it gives you two options. Okay, either you can give the latest version, like 6.1.4 is the latest version right now. It will download immediately, install, and then it will run. Okay, if you don't want to run with the latest version, maybe it's not compatible or it, you don't want to update, you can give the older version as well and it should run. Cool. Uh, so we have time for one more. I'll sort of combine uh, the two questions that are raised for that, um, Kesh. Uh, so does Catalan integrate with both uh, AWS code pipeline as well as uh, DevOps Azure? Yes, yes. Awesome. Great. So I think that's all the time we had for today. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. Thank you, Mukesh, for, for the demo and, and the insights. We, we appreciate it as always. Um, and uh, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, we'll send out the recording of this webinar shortly. So everybody has uh, the ability to go back and review it and uh, you know, reach out on the community uh, uh, and, and ask uh, any additional questions or, or uh, exchanges of ideas as always. Uh, thank you again and, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Yeah. Thanks much and thanks everyone. And um, I hope you guys got the idea of CICD and how the test will fit with your CICD pattern. And again, sorry for the demo. Like, uh, I will not say our demo didn't work. It is just the application had some issues, but I hope you understand the complete uh, fundamental of CICD, how it works, right? So that's all I have from my side. If anybody have any question, uh, once you upload this video officially on Catalan, just let me know your question on the comment section and me uh, and Mush will try to best answer all the questions. Okay. Thanks everyone and have a nice day. Great. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.